Today we explore the ascension of Jesus into heaven in all of its mysteries. I'm Father Phil. It's the seventh Sunday of Easter. Christ is risen. Glory to God in the highest. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them. And know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them. And not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that 
they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, in today's Gospel, Jesus is... <laughs> weaving an incredible tapestry of words that is really difficult to understand if you go word by word or thread by thread. It's the kind of thing where you have to step back and the image reveals itself as all of the words and all of the threads come together in, in the beauty of their weaving and we see in them the face of Jesus and a portrait of the Son of God who is fueling us and praying for us and guiding and strengthening and renewing us from the other side, from the heavenly places, from the right hand of God. How does he get there? How does Jesus get into the halls of heaven? into the, the glorious home of his father. Well, we know for sure two things. We know for sure that Jesus was on earth, and today we know for sure that Christ is in heaven, because through Christ, all the heavenly things are opened up to us. So clearly he's there at God's right hand, which of course means he's God's right hand man, right? He is the one who is who God is using to accomplish his will. Clearly, Christ is at God's right hand, um, working to accomplish the Father's will. So we have him here and we have him there. And the question is, how does he get from one place to the other? Thus, the feast of the ascension. The ascension of Jesus is mentioned in the Nicene Creed. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. The ascension is also found sprinkled throughout the New Testament scriptures. Um, the quote-unquote longer ending of Mark, it looks um, not original, but from Mark um, 16, 9 onwards, looks like it was appended to the original. It's a lot of... Uh, Bibles have footnotes that say this might not be original, but it was very early. Um, that section includes words about Jesus uh, ascending to God's right hand. Um, no ascension in the Gospel of Matthew. Um, the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John, however, have um, have these uh, references to ascension. Luke especially. Um, John has Jesus telling Mary Magdalene in the garden. You may remember he is, he's resurrected. She thinks he's the gardener. And he says to her, don't cling to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. I must ascend to my Father and your Father. So he mentions ascension in John. Luke is the one, okay? So there's like a couple words here or there in the other um, Gospels. But Luke is the one who develops the ascension to all of the fullness that we may know it today. Uh, Luke tells us in his gospel that Jesus goes out to Bethany and he was lifted from the earth. He tells us even more in uh, the beginning of the book of Acts because Luke writes the gospel of Luke and Acts both as 
two volumes. And he tells us even more in Acts. He says that Jesus was lifted up, and as they watched, he was hidden in the clouds and, um, and ascended into heaven basically before their eyes, at which point two angels pop up and say, what are you looking into heaven for? Um, you know, get about the business of the Lord. And so they go and start to wait uh, for the Holy Spirit. The ascension, therefore, has always been challenging for Christians to, um, to believe in its, its literal shape. Okay? And that is because we have this portrait of the risen Christ, you know, risen from the dead, um, lifting from the earth and like passing into the clouds and going into heaven. Well, this makes a certain amount of sense in what you might call the three-tiered universe where earth is flat and then there's the sky and past the sky is heaven. There's three tiers, you see. And so Jesus was going from earth through the sky into heaven. But today we've, you know, we've got the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, you know, we've done a lot of research into the cosmos. Voyager has left the solar system and, um, you know, it's, we haven't found heaven yet, right? So if the sky includes space, it's quite a big, big distance. And the question is, you know, so like what happens to Jesus as we think about the ascension and all of its literal clarity? What happens to Jesus? Um, you know, he goes off the earth, but depending on where he was on the earth, he goes into a different point of space because earth is round. And then does he go into outer space? Does he pass out of the solar system? Like, is he still in the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy at this point? Has he passed through other galaxies? Uh, you know, is, is, is he still ascending? As Carl Sagan once said, even if Jesus ascended from the Mount of Olives at the speed of light, he would still be in the Milky Way galaxy, uh, much less having passed out of the known universe. All of which makes uh, our understanding of ascension uh, more and more difficult. Here, I think, is where we want to land, what we can understand about ascension and how we can use the ascension of Jesus to power us in our Christian faith. Um, first of all, I think we want to set all of that, the, the literalism aside on both, on both parts, okay? Setting aside the literalism of the um, literal rising of Jesus from the earth, and also setting aside the literalism of Carl Sagan and the speed of light and the Milky Way galaxy. Um, let's instead look at the meaning of the encounters people have with the risen Christ. Because as we look at the risen Christ, we begin to understand what the significance of the ascension truly is. Okay, so there are seven encounters in the Gospels that people have with Christ after his resurrection. Uh, none in Mark, uh, one in Matthew, two in Luke, and four in John. So let's start with John. The first one is Jesus in the garden. Mary Magdalene's just found the empty tomb. She comes out of the tomb. Lo and behold, there's the gardener. We mentioned that. So Jesus and Mary have this conversation back and forth. Jesus calls her by name. He says, Mary. And suddenly in that moment, her eyes are opened. You see, she was looking right at him. But suddenly as he calls her by name, she realizes, she says, Rabuni, which is like rabbi, but like with a, a kind of a, a loving kind of uh, suffix added to it. Like you might add why, like, you know, uh, uh, just a, a way of endearment. Rabuni, she says. And then Jesus tells her, to go and tell the disciples uh, that he has been risen, uh, he has been raised, that he's alive. The second and third encounters um, in, in John, both are partners to each other. The first one is when Jesus, on the day of resurrection, so the day that he's risen, the disciples were closed in their doors, in the, in the room, uh, locked because of fear, and Jesus appears among them. 
in that encounter, he tells them not to be afraid. He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. The third encounter is with Thomas, because Thomas wasn't there. And so he's talking to the disciples and he says, I won't believe unless I encounter Jesus for myself. And a week later, in the third encounter, the doors were locked again, but suddenly Jesus is there. And Jesus comes to Thomas and Jesus offers himself to Thomas. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says to Thomas, you believe because you've seen, but blessed are those who haven't seen, but have come to believe, which is to say who haven't seen, but have seen, right? Who haven't recognized, but have come to recognize. The fourth uh, one, also here in John, is at the end of John's gospel when the disciples have gone back and they're on the Sea of Galilee and they're fishing seven of them. And one of them says, hey, there's somebody on the shore. Peter realizes it's Jesus, although the others can't recognize him. But Peter knows with his heart. Peter jumps into the water. He swims to shore. There's Jesus preparing a meal of fish, just like he did um, in some ways at the feeding of the 5,000. He's got the fish there ready, not the bread this time. And, and it's a cooking on a charcoal fire, a fire that's been going for a while. And in their conversation, Jesus says, do you love me three times? Do you love me? Peter says, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then Jesus tells him, go feed my lambs, feed my sheep. A moment of reconciliation, as you've heard. Peter denies Jesus three times. Here is Jesus, Peter, saying he loves Jesus three times. And also a moment of, of commissioning. As from that love, from that forgiveness, Peter is given a mission to go out and feed and care for Jesus' sheep. Now, we're going to look at the other three. But if we just look at these four for a second, what we begin to see is that in each of these encounters, Jesus is, um, it's mystical, okay? If there's a mystical element to it where he, he can be seen or he can't be seen. He's passing through walls. And also a powerful spiritual element of empowering to the people who encounter him. Which is to say that in none of these four encounters, the people changed simply by the man they see in front of him. The risen Christ is more than um, the body of Jesus who's in front of them again. What in fact we see in the risen Christ is there is Christ in a sort of a, a mystical revelation, a, 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 a mystical revealed body, but also here is Christ opening up the gates of heaven and pouring down into the people spiritual power, okay, that has the, uh, the, a, a way of transforming them, transforming their lives, their vision, their purpose, all together at once. So Jesus calls Mary by name and she's recognized by heaven. She's filled with an awareness that's, which comes in the spirit. And then he sends her out to go proclaim to the apostles. For the disciples, Jesus sends them the Holy Spirit. Where except from heaven? Here is Christ from heaven sending down the Holy Spirit. But he's there in front of them as well. But you see he's, he's in, like, in both places. Here he is before them, but there he is above them. And all of the heavenly things are being richly poured down into them. Thomas, again, is, has this moment to perceive Jesus. It's a movement of faith that lets him say, you're my Lord and my God. You see, his heart has been changed. And then Jesus says, blessed are those who haven't seen but can see. And then this whole movement with Peter of sort of spiritual power, of, of love, of commissioning, of forgiveness, and of sending. What we already we begin to realize is that the risen Christ is operating in a, in a two-tiered way where he's already from heaven pouring out spiritual power from the Father. 
We see this also in the other three encounters. So moving to the Gospel of, of Luke, there's two key ones. Uh, it's on the day of resurrection again, okay? So the moment of power, the, the moment of transformation. Um, two people are walking away from Jerusalem, and here comes a stranger walking along with them. They know Jesus. They're friends with the disciples, okay? They go straight to the apostles when this encounter is over, but they don't recognize Jesus right there with them. And they talk with him, and Jesus begins to teach them by opening their minds to see, to understand the scriptures. You see where I'm getting at, that all of these spiritual things, opening their minds. They stop at Emmaus, and Jesus is going to go, but they say, no, stay with us, Christ. And as he breaks the bread, he takes, he blesses, he breaks, and he gives, just like the Eucharist, taking, blessing, breaking, and giving. As Jesus does that, their eyes are suddenly opened, and he disappears from before them. But he doesn't disappear from them, you see, because everything they've received in the Spirit, they keep. They keep their minds open to the scriptures. They keep their understanding of it. They keep Christ with them as they called him to stay. They keep that moment of Christ. And as they took his broken body and their eyes were open, they stay open. Christ stays with them. Well, they run back to Jerusalem, and so the sixth resurrection appearance is they come to the disciples and they say, Oh my gosh, he appeared to us on the road to Emmaus. By the way, the word Emmaus is from Emmanuel. It literally means um, God with us or God who is revealed to us, almost like even a mystical name of a place. And as they're telling the apostles, Jesus appears among them. It's a lot like John's gospel where he says peace to them. And then just like he did to them on the road, Jesus opens the apostles' minds to understand the scriptures. The last encounter is um, at the end of the gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. It's called the Great Commission, where Jesus is there on the mountain, and it's the resurrected Christ, and they come to him, and he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I have taught you. These last three encounters carry on what we found in the first four, which is here is Christ before them. But in, in, in some ways, he's like a lens. He's like, he's like a lens through which they are actually looking into heaven and a lens also through which all the things of heaven are being focused through Christ into them. So we see that on the way to uh, uh, Emmaus, all these spiritual things are opened to them. And for the disciples, their, their minds and hearts being open, the peace that they receive. And in the Great Commission, Christ himself commissioning them to go out and to preach and to teach and to serve and to baptize and to bring all nations into Christ. Everything we hear in these seven encounters speak to us about a power of Christ on the other side. And I think this is the most important thing for us as we stop and consider the ascension. What the ascension is, uh, uh, essential, uh, essential, essential, essentially, <laughs> got caught there. What the ascension is essential, essentially, is um, the mysterious hinge which um, connects the two pieces that we know for sure, which is Christ was here, Christ is, Christ is risen, Christ is in heaven, and, and how did the, the, the two happen? Maybe somehow in the resurrection through the mystical power of life and God at work, um, the two worlds were bridged. Earth and heaven were connected. And Christ passed from one to the other, but didn't let go of the one when he went to the other. Passing from earth to heaven, he held on to earth and he held on to heaven. And through him, both are brought together so that ascension is almost for us this awareness that through him, we have access to, um, 
to gifts and understanding and transformation from heaven, which touch us on earth, which enable us to see Christ at work on earth, and then enable us to do God's will on earth as it's done in heaven. You're wondering, like, so, like, answer for us, how do, what happens to Jesus's toes as they release from the Mount of Olives? I think all of it's purposely mysterious. There's a reason only Mark, a Matthew, there's a reason only Luke gives us like those really clear details, but all four of the gospels speak to the reality of the, um, of the result, which is Christ is raised. Christ is found in heaven, but his body touches earth. Christ from heaven reveals everything we need to know, everything we need to understand, and everything we need to serve. But not only from heaven, but from this place as well. The two pieces being drawn together in one. Christ having passed from here to there, but holding you and the Father, each in one hand, so that as he brings them together, the ascension sort of happens in us. You are the place where the Christ of heaven touches the Christ one of earth. Christ of earth reaches up and connects with the glory of heaven. You are the lens. You become the frame where through this grace and by this mystery, hearts are opened, eyes are opened, hands are strengthened, sins are forgiven, and a commissioning is given to go and love and serve. Amen. We continue with our prayers. By the risen Christ, we are renewed, transformed, equipped, and sent by Christ. And with Christ and in Christ, O Lord, deliver us from the way of sin and death. Open our hearts to your grace and truth. Fill us with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep us in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach us to love others in the power of the spirit. Send us into the world in witness to your love. Bring us to the fullness of your peace and glory. And grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. We continue now at the Lord's table. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Jesus
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God.
for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. I am taping, but I'll cut this part out. <laughs> so I was, maybe you need an audience. I was going to come here and be your audience.
Oh, thanks. No, <laughs> that'd probably throw me. <laughs> you doing all right? Hello, man. How are you? I'm real good. Yeah, just walking by, or are you checking the water again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a blessing. Almighty God bless you and keep you today and forever. Thank you. Especially on such a beautiful one. Thank you. That was one of the Grozio Public Works employees. Super nice guy. What a great, great place to live.